So this video is basically about this, but it's also about the new meter I got, the new multimeter that is. And um, I went to start this Mercedes up E500 O5 E500 and it was dead. It was stone cold dead. I mean not just dead but most sincerely dead. And also I measured the battery. Battery's in the trunk on this thing. And the battery read 4.5 volts. And then um, a couple days later, just coincidentally, I found out that the meter I use is wrong. It was actually lower than that. Um, I found out that at 12 volts, the meter was reading 15 volts. And yeah, let's 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 show. I'll show you this. So I'm gonna open the trunk here. To do this, you have that little uh, shiv key or the blade key. You shove it in there and. You turn it to about 10 o'clock and there's a, a lever here, also called a lever, and you open it up. And inside my trunk here, besides the full size spare, which I bought because I don't like those little Mercedes uh, donut spares, so I got a new wheel, put a tire, got an assortment of meters here. I got this uh, ammeter that I was going to use, but then um, this only is good for AC, so that's pretty useless on DC, ain't it? But I used the meter on there. I found out my old meter, this is, I had this for like 10 years plus, this MAS 830L, uh, Northern Tools, but this is sold under a variety of names. Uh, this was reading 15 volts. Something happened to it. So 12, volt, 12 volts was reading 15 volts, approximately. So that's really no good. So I found out this actually has a voltmeter built into here. This is actually pretty good. I like this. But this is more like for AC. Uh, you clamp it on the wire. So I got this thing here. Uh, HT113B True RMS and I like this meter by uh, K Wheats. Sounds Korean but it's not, it's Chinese. K Wheats. And you turn it on, it has a really nice display on it. I like that. It's got a light, you can light the display at nighttime, it lights up real good. It also has, which I found out was helpful, it's got a flashlight on it. And that was real helpful um, looking at this battery at nighttime. Here's the battery. So I charged this up, took the terminals off because this thing was flatter than a pancake, and I charged it up using this new thing I got battery tender plus and I guess this thing is working I wanted something slow charge 1.25 amp and I charged it up to 13.7 volts and uh, as soon as I took the cables off it went down to 13.2 volts so I didn't I didn't overcharge the battery I didn't try to condition the battery you know, uh, there's a word for that, I forgot what it's called, but you, you kind of could go over the voltage. You know, I just charged the battery up to full. And uh, I'm at the point now where I can measure, see what it is today. So let's see what it is today. That was last night. It was 13.2 last night. And let's see what it is. Because I got to diagnose why this battery was totally flat. And I really suspect that something shorted out in the electronics of the car that made the battery go totally flat because I ran the car one day and it ran good but it seemed to start a little slow I ran it around real good and the next day I went to start it up the very next day and it was flatter than a pancake 
and the battery really was discharged. So I'm thinking something shorted. And what I was reading is oftentimes it's the computer seat module that runs the seats. There's two of them, one for that seat and one for this seat. And because there's always power to the seats, uh, the module could do something and kill the battery. So I'm going to look for that foist. So I used the hold function. This is a good thing too. It has a hold function. 12.93 volts. So last night at 10 o'clock at night, it was 13.2 volts. So that's dropped. How much did that drop? 0.2, it dropped 0.27 volts overnight in about 14 hours. So it's, so you can tell the time is, it's noon now. So it's, it dropped 0.27 volts. Did I do that math right? I think so. Yeah, 0.27 volts in 14 hours. It seems like a lot. How much would that be? That's like about 2%. It dropped 2% overnight. So maybe the battery's got a problem or something. Battery's only a year old. So maybe I'm not running the car enough. But notice it's not totally dead overnight. So um, you know, this, this is still fully charged. All right, 12.9, 12.8 will be fully charged for an AGM battery which this is it's a, one of those AGM batteries in here one of them made in Germany too I got a replacement one the old battery lasted 13 years so this battery is like a year old two years old yeah time goes fast but anyway it is fully charged so what I'm, my plan to do is to hook this ammeter in series with the battery and see how much current is being drawn just hooked up. Maybe that's not a good idea. I gotta see how much... I gotta look on the instructions because it may be a surge of amperage when I uh, first hook it up because it gotta run uh, the ABS motor and whatever motors it runs, and whatever electronics it runs, could be a pretty good draw at the, at the get go. First, connecting the battery up. So, I gotta see how much current this could actually handle before I do that. So, according to Kai Wheats, it says here that the DC current could be 10 amps. So I don't, I don't think the motors and stuff, when I plug, when I hook this back up, I don't think it's going to be pulling 10 amps. So uh, I'm going to hook this battery, this meter in series to the battery and see what happens, alright? Got my scotch tape. So, um, let's see. I could, uh, I got this tape too, but it's too much residue. Take the cable for the hot, actually, the, the red. If you think about it, the hot, the hot is really the the negative is really the hot because the electrons flow out of the negative and go into the positive. So that's kind of why they tell you to make the uh, this connection last. Actually, I should do it the other way around. You know why? Because I'm going to put the tape on the... I'm going to tape up the... Uh, I should break convention. Because... What I should do is... Put the leads up first to the negative, but then put the positive one on. So I connected... 
the negative probe to the negative here and kind of tighten that bolt there a little. Oh, by the way, don't try this at home. Oh, I know, you're saying this is a do-it-yourself video, but now you don't want us to do it at home. No, I don't want you to do this at home. Because you could blow yourself up or something. No, you're not going to. Yeah, you probably would. I mean, it's possible. See, I'm doing this. I got wind. I'm outside. And uh, trunk's open right outside. So, but anyway, this battery vents, actually. Has a venting, a valved venting system where it vents in a pipe goes like under outside the car like that and it vents the hydrogen out you know so I'm just saying charging up a battery and a conventional battery that ain't sealed and then the hydrogen's coming out and then you're farting around and stuff like this and making a spark yeah you could you could blow yourself up batteries could blow up so I'm just saying you gotta be careful with stuff like this I'm just doing it because I'm an idiot but also, I don't want to take this to like Mercedes dealer and have them try to figure it out, which would be ka-ching, ka-ching. You know, they're going to say, look who just walked in. Oh my God, look who came in. Ka-ching, ka-ching. So anyway, um, let's continue. Yeah, you got to do the switcheroo. And uh, you got the common and plug this one into... Oh, it says 10 amp on there already. Plug that into the 10 amp connector there. Now let's put this on DC amps. So they got a control that says AC and DC. So what you got to do is hit the function button here. And that puts it on DC. It better. Yeah, it does. DC amps. Okay. So now what I gotta do is tape this to the battery post. Right? Yeah, and then simply plug the other battery post in. Ha ha ha. Ha ha. So I taped this on with scotch tape. See it? Can you see it? And it really is scotch tape. So now all I got to do, I had this other roll, I used that roll to isolate the positive battery terminal. So now I'm going to plug that on. Oh, you see I'm out of hands. One of those things, I'm out of hands again. I want to do this with this hand and put this on the meter over here. See? So let's try it. Here goes nothing. And when I said nothing, it really is nothing. Nothing happened. Here it goes, look. I went to overload for a second. Six amps. Holy cow. Six amps? Well, it's negative six amps. Cause I got it backwards. Six amps. I don't hear any motors running. The only thing running is this trunk light. Five amps. I'll hold it for a second or two. It's dropping. Look. I'm gonna have to secure this terminal better, get like a clamp on there or something. I'm gonna come back, I disconnected it, and get like a, uh, a hose clamp, put it around that terminal. I wanna get a good connection on that, uh, on that probe wire, okay? See, it says live and learn. See, you learn things every day. Scotch tape is not good for taping probe wires to a battery terminal. I thought it would be, but who, who knew? I'm going to write to the scotch tape people 
who's that, 3M or something like that. I want to write to them and say, you know, scotch tape doesn't work good taping a probe wire to a lead battery terminal. I'm really, really ticked on that. Okay, it's me. I'm back again. And, um, got a screwdriver. And a breeze hose clamp. So I'm going to clamp this wire onto the battery terminal, which is the negative battery terminal. So it's going to read backwards, but who cares? I mean, is that a big deal? I mean, some people would be a big deal, but I don't think it's a big deal. Anyway, let me do that. Okay, I got it connected pretty good with a hose clamp. And I know what you're going to say. And I'll, I'll just answer before you say it, because I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, um, hey man, that's a Mercedes, man, and you're fooling around. And I say, like, working on a Mercedes, just like working on any other stupid car, except for the very expensive, uh, sophisticated uh, computers with 40 computers in the car and highly sensitive stuff that you could blow out. But besides that, it's just the same as, as like an old car. I don't, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. So my plan is, see it's already dropping, it was 6 amps and now it's 1.85 amps and some of that is this stupid light here and I guess another light here. Oh, why they got two lights here? Is this a light? I don't know what that is. What is that? Yeah, some kind of green light. Oh, maybe that's like a button you press or something. Maybe that's something to, like an emergency or something. I don't know. But it has like an LED light there. And a regular light. But after a while, the light will go out. So I'm going to go inside and relax. And come back in like five minutes. Let's see what it says. 1.6 amps. Okay. Okay, I just hung around outside and watched and that light's still on. Look. But this now dropped to 1.07 amps. So the amperage is dropping as more computers do their thing and whatnot on this dumb Mercedes. I shouldn't say dumb, the car is probably smarter than I am. And it probably knows that it's time to do the German revenge on the American owner. It probably is time for that. And I don't really think this car even liked having Mercedes-Benz name. Oh, well, you know something? I'm gonna have to uh, leave this door open too when I do diagnostic. Because this door puts lights on too. And my, my dash just lit up with a, with a horrible announcement about the, the brake system. Ah, oh, you suck. Brake. Reduced braking power. Yeah, okay. Maybe that oh, went off. Okay, so I gotta leave this door open because the courtesy light's gotta go out too. So it's something. Oh, courtesy lights. It's pulling uh, almost six amps again for the courtesy lights. Hmm. That was something. So was something. What was my original plan anyway? Oh, my original plan was to let this stabilize and see how much current it draws after it stabilizes. Okay, it's going down again. So some of this is the courtesy lights. Hmm. Uh, current's dropping again. I know what you're thinking. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking that, well, gee, Lockmeister, why don't you just go into, hook the battery back up like normal, go into the uh, settings with your uh, mode settings, and just turn off all your courtesy lights. You know, that's, that's, that might be possible. Oh, it went off anyway. Look, it just went off. Yeah. Well, I was going to say it might be possible, but I tried changing things on here. And even though you change it, 
it still does the same thing anyway, even though you change it. It's one of those German electronic things. You, you change a setting and it's still doing it. You know, it's kind of like this ESP system this car has. You can't turn the ESP off, which is the electronic stability program. You think you turn it off, but Mercedes doesn't want you to turn it off all the way. So it turns off maybe halfway or something, but the stability program still runs. But they make you think you turned it off, but you really didn't turn it off. It's like Mother Mercedes wants you to be safe. So, um, you know, all the lights are off except for this thing that says the trunk is open, I guess. Okay, hey, my trunk light went out. I don't know if this green thing's still on or not. It might be. Okay, good. So now we're pulling 340 uh, milliamps. Okay, that sounds not too bad. So, it's not really enough to kill the battery overnight, is it? 340 milliamps? How could that kill the battery overnight? Let me think about that. The battery is 95 amp hours. 95 amp hours. This means like an amp. Uh oh, what's going on with that? Something was beeping. Oh, my meter's beeping. You know why? My meter's beeping because it's saying. It wants to turn itself off. It's a pain, isn't it, huh? There, I'll hit the hold button. And I'll take the hold button off. That gives me another uh, 15 minutes on that. Hmm. Point three. I'm going to watch this for a little bit. Okay, I did some reading on this. And... It should be like between 0.05 amp and 0.1 amp. 0.1 would be 100 milliamps, so I'm about 300 milliamps. So I got a draw, but it might be partly because I got the trunk open. You know, this this might be a light on in here. I can't tell. And I got that little warning light where the trunk release is. You see? Uh, got that little light there on so maybe I got to close the trunk you know and leave the meter outside so I'm gonna try that so I brought the leads out the trunk and I closed the trunk and doing that made it jump up to five amps again what So what happened there? Did my interior lights go on again? No, my interior lights did not go on. And this light went off. So closing the trunk... Let me figure this stuff out, huh? Just closing the trunk is all I did. Okay, now it's dropping again. 450 million, this is a lot. So I'm going to go inside for like a half hour and see if what happens after a half hour. You know? Maybe something electronic is going. I have no idea. Okay, it's down at 300 again. 280. I'll give it a chance. Okay, so um, I'm going to take a break for a half hour. Let it stabilize. Maybe something's got to stabilize. I have one of these. Do you guys like Nutty Buddies? I eat these all the time. Yeah, you, you put them in the fridge and they get cooler. This would be a good little snack. I like them, but they changed the recipe. They got a little more peanut butter in. They're not as crispy, but still, they're good cold. Have them cold. That's a good tip. Okay, this thing's been sitting. 
120 bounces around from 127 128 million oh then once in a while see it goes to about 0.21 so something something runs here something's running see it gets a little jump once in a while okay so it's supposed to be below 100 milliamps so it's between 128 milliamps and maybe a hundred maybe 200 milliamps to AC 204 so it's it's higher than what it's supposed to be but that didn't kill my battery overnight there's no way in hell that killed my battery overnight that's that's too low I mean I could see after a month maybe it would kill the battery it's not gonna kill the battery overnight and I doubt that would kill the battery in a month. Well, probably, probably knock it down to about half, right? And the battery has its own self-discharge rate. But still, I'm just, I'm just talking now. I'm just talking. Just think with me for a second. Um, that's probably enough to kill the battery in a month. But that's not enough to, to kill the battery overnight. So let's think, what could have happened? Maybe disconnecting the battery here for like, I've had it disconnected for over a week. So maybe longer, maybe two weeks, which isn't really good for electronics to do all that. I had it disconnected for like two weeks. So maybe totally powering it down corrected something. So the only thing I gotta do now, I guess. Oh look, it even went a little. It went lower. Look, look at that. Right when I was talking. Okay, now it's only 80 milliamps, 82 milliamps. So that's nothing. It's below 100, and once in a while, you see that. So you got something running. It's 80 milliamp, and once in a while, see that. It jumps up 100 milliamps, 110 milliamps. Okay, so it went to 82 milliamps, and it jumps. That jump, I don't know. Let me close the door and see what happens. Okay, let me close this door just for the heck of it. See, closing the door ran it back up to 6 amps again. So now I gotta let it come down again. What in the world? So it senses the door closed. Maybe it thinks some, someone got in the car, which they didn't touch anything, it just closed the door. So it sensed something and it jumped up to six amps again. So I gotta let it go down again. See this is this is this is classic. I could chase my tail for ten years trying to find this. Well, I didn't try anything yet. I guess start pulling fuses, but 80 milliamps, 80 milliamps wasn't bad. And it does jump to like 180 milliamps, but let's see what happens when the door is closed. Maybe something will happen when you're different, you know? I don't know, I'm mumbling now. You know, my mind is already numb already looking at this thing. Yeah, it's doing its thing. It's back down to uh, 250 milliamps, approximately 242. I don't think closing the door is going to do anything. The best thing I could do is to take this meter off, hook the battery back up like normal, drive it around, and totally forget about everything I just done here. <whistles> oh, oh no! Try again. Press that there. Okay, this is good. It has a battery saver on here. Hey, I'm pretty happy with this um, with this meter, huh? Seems pretty cool. It was like 20, 21 bucks for this, I think. Not bad. Not bad. Made by our friends in China. Made by our buddies in China. K Wheats. Kaya Kaya Wheats. 
Kai Wheats probably means damn Yankee or something. Kai Wheats! Okay, that's what I'm going to do. I mean, it's a little higher, but I'm pretty sure it's going to drop lower again to uh, 82 milliamps if I give it like another 20 minutes. So what I'm going to do is uh, hook it all back up, drive it around, take my cell phone in case something crazy happens. Oh, when I start it up, one thing I got to do is um, probably reset the um, the access the x axis. Oh, I can't even say it. The axis sensor, steering axis sensor. Yeah, that's it. I'm not gonna open the door. But I'm gonna have to. No, I don't have to open the door. Um, yeah, you do that by you start it up, then you turn the wheel all the way to the left and turn it all the way to the right, and then it resets the steering axis axis sen sensor. Why can't I talk? I have no idea. Okay, I'm going to drive it around and see what the hell happens, you know? So I'll just move this crate out of the way and um, take it for a spin. Come back, park it back in here, and then check the battery voltage before I go to bed. That's a good idea, right? Check the battery voltage before I go to bed and see if it's doing something crazy again. That's a good idea, huh? If anyone has any ideas, think about it. Put your thinking cap on. Think about it. And uh, send me a comment here. See if you think of something. Okay, thanks a lot. Um, I'll take it for a spin. Okay. Lessons sei in die machine starten. Contact. Yeah. I've left out churches and other houses of worship. Yeah, Donald so, Trump. Right. So I'm correcting this injustice and calling houses of worship essential. All right. I call upon governors to allow our churches and places of worship. Good for Donald right Trump. Now. If there's any question, they're going to have to call me, but they're not going to be successful in that call. These are places that hold our society together and keep our people united. The people are demanding to go to church and synagogue, go to their mosque. Many millions of Americans embrace worship as an essential part of life. The ministers, pastors, rabbis, imams, and other faith leaders will make sure that their congregations are safe as they gather and pray. Mm, that's pretty good. Now, where was I? Oh, yeah. So, das machine is starting. Let me back it out of the garage. So far, so good. Oop, kind of hit this tree a little bit over here. Maybe I should cut it down a little bit. Just cut it down a tad. Okay. What I gotta do here is, I gotta connect this up here. Oh, hey, I can see myself. I gotta connect this up because I have to deactivate the ESP because that's 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 a that's one kraut computer that is not working right and the ESP when it's not working right kind of shuts down the ABS and then starts shutting down the engine and the transmission goes into limp mode even though the transmission doesn't say it's limp mode it goes into second gear which is limp mode 
so the ESP is probably it's probably following up because I think the pretty sure the right wheel sensor that's the error I get on this thing the right wheel um, sensor I replaced that but what's really wrong is the the tone wheel or the speed wheel the speed uh, sensing wheel that's on the hub I think it may be rusted or something so it doesn't pick up right so I'm going to use this to shut the uh, ESP off okay yeah this plug-in meter is good because this shows um, the alternator is charging good 14.07 is about what you want on these Mercedes 14.08 that's that's a good number kind of bounces a little bit well that's the good number that's the number you want that's what the alternator should be charging on the battery yeah this iCar soft thing is pretty good uh, I just like bends bends that's the firmware checks the files good with the thing what the heck this thing is it's a uh, W211-E chassis up to two, uh, 5, 2005. That's what this is, pretty sure. Anyway, uh, sedan, gasoline engine, left-hand steering. It's the uh, 211.083, the E500 4MATIC. Okay, say okay. Do manual select, and then I could go down to uh, oops, go down to ESP electronic stability program. And uh, so I'll show you if I read the fault memory. Yeah, this this uh, fault stores under voltage six for a short time. Okay, we know that. Why? Then we got this stored error. Yeah, I wish I could grab that better. See the right front speed sensor. I replaced the sensor, but it still does it. So I'm in the middle of doing that. But that's not why the battery went dead. I mean, I've had this problem with the speed sensor for like a year. But um, anyway, let me say OK. Escape out of there. And if you go to actual values like this, and go to uh, RPM sensor, which it is, RPM sensor. This is a real data stream in real time. And if you look here, it says ESP is not avail unavailable diagnostic test. So I shut the, so is the ABS. I still have the Sensitronic brakes, which I, runs the braking system. So the Sensitronic brakes, they have to work. But the ABS part of that is not working because it does not get the signal from the ESP. So I gotta do here, let me just reset this accent sen sensor here. Do like all the way like that. Go all the way like this. And I'm just assuming that the sensor gotta re reset. Okay? Now I'll just take a ride. Yeah, go for a little ride. Hey, I wonder if fast food came up with something called a Corona Burger. I wonder if that would uh, sell good. Just thinking about it, that's all. Just thinking about it. Hmm. Yeah, I stopped to get some Pissoline. Not bad. Power Premium is uh, Texaco. Uh, Texaco Power Premium, 225.9. That's not bad. And you can watch TV while you're pumping gas. This is gonna be America's favorite Oh, I need to go to Wendy's. She winked at me. She said, and that's what Wendy's makes it. Not weeks oh. or months ago. Try your new favorite. Get a free breakfast baconator with offer in the app. Okay. This is going to be America's favorite breakfast. Try Wendy's breakfast. Today. Baconator breakfast. 
Yeah, my cholesterol's already high enough though. Oh, yep, hey, all filled up. How much I put in? Uh, Fifteen point eight gallons, thirty-five, almost thirty-six bucks. It ain't that bad. Okay, pull it back in. I took it for a nice ride. You know, it's a nice, it's a nice car to ride around in. I have to tell you, but it's it's nice. You know, I mean, but um. Filled it up with uh, with Texaco Power Premium, which is the same as Chevron. And Chevron, Chevron, Texaco—they're good gas, and it's got the Tecron in it. I only use Chevron or Texaco uh, most of the time. I use Shell. That Shell—I um, forgot their trade name for their 93 octane, but it's pretty good stuff. So those three gases I normally use, but uh, yeah, it runs pretty good, to be honest with you. This thing it goes zero to sixty, depending on who you believe. Zero to sixty with four matic, six point one, six point three seconds. That's not bad, really. I mean, think about it. That's muscle car territory. But anyway, so that's the plan. I'm going to run this thing uh, now and then monitor the battery voltage like I could get in the car and turn the key on very easily see what the voltage is if I see the voltage really dropping off then I'm going to have to disconnect the battery again and do more, do more diagnostic test so um, if there is then it will be like a part two you know this would be like an introduction part Maybe the thing fixed itself by disconnecting the battery for two weeks. Maybe it fixed itself. Maybe it needed a, like a discharge or something. I don't know. We shall see. So um, take it easy, folks. Have a nice evening. Have a nice day. God bless. Have a nice Memorial Day. Have a nice weekend. Enjoy the summer. Stay safe. You know the drill. Have a good one. Bye.